Alrighty, welcome to Chunkcast number eight. Eight. This is three straight weeks in a row that I've done this. It's going all right. So today we're going to touch on a few things that caught my attention this week. Three topics. The Joker review. I saw it yesterday and I'm going to give my thoughts on it. Superman loses Clark Kent. That's a new thing that's happened before actually. And Gears 5 DLC issues. Oh my god. I'm going to give my thoughts on that and why I'm just not really playing it at the moment. Anyway, let's hook right in. Oh, cool. Chant. Ah, yes, that's nice. Um, before we get started, just to touch on a couple things as always. A couple of game pickups I want to touch over. These game pickups don't deserve their own video because they're so far and few between, so I, that's why I include them at the start of these. So, got three. Three games here. They're all original Xbox games. Yes. I am collecting for that console just some key titles of mine that I want to get back and some titles that I never got to try but always wanted to. I'm not going to collect every game. I'm just ticking off a list of games that I want that um, I've always wanted to try and they're dirt cheap these days. Same as 360. You're going to see some 360 games coming through chunk casts now and then. Um, I might have a massive diatribe as to why I'm picking up older games rather than new games, but that's a whole topic on its own that I think I might have touched on last week. Anyway, so way back when, when I got my original Xbox console, it came packed in with a game. Back in those days, consoles came packed in with games for the most part. Xbox was no stranger to that, and the one I picked up came boxed in with um, Amped. Of all games. Now I'm not a sporty guy at all. Really not. However, I thoroughly enjoyed this game. This is not the boxed in version. It doesn't have the not for resale sticker on there. This is the actual solo copy on shelves. Complete uh, manual. Oh look, it's even got... What's that? It's even got a little... Oh, customer service. Um... I'll just pull it out. Hang on a minute. Yeah. It's complete with disc and manual. Yeah, it's even got the uh, safety information, customer service numbers. That's pretty cool. Wow, really good condition. Jeez. You don't really see this very often when you're picking up these games. Um, I, I just buy practically strictly on eBay because every single one of them, I only buy them if they're at a good price and they've got photos of the front and the back and the insides. That way you can see the whole thing and the disc. Um, and I, I haven't had a problem since. Uh, the first couple I picked up was like Kung Fu Hustle and Crimson Skies uh, and Tiger the Tasmanian Tiger. They came with um, yeah, some issues with the cases, like the plastic was peeling on the corner here, which is pretty common or whatever. But otherwise, I'm not too too concerned. Um, you can buy cases on eBay, like blank cases, if I, if I really wanted to be that anal about it. As long as they're complete, I'm happy. But yeah, Amped was my first Xbox game ever. And I had to pick it up. It was really cheap, like nine bucks. Free postage. Steel. A lot of these games that I've picked up have been less than $20 or less than $15 free postage. There are some on my list that are well over that. <laughs> um, they will be the last ones that I'll get. Uh, I'm not in a rush to get those. But uh, yeah, anyway, Amps, let me know if you've played that one. It's actually a lot of fun. I remember this game really wowing me back in the day because you could create your own custom soundtracks uh, from your hard drive and put them into the game. Uh, let you rip, rip your discs onto the console, download all the songs, and you can create your own playlists. And the snow, uh, the snow dynamics or graphics or however, whatever you want to call it, um, I remember uh, practically going, wow, look at that, like my snowboard, you can see it. You know, breaking the snow and leaving the trails and that kind of stuff. And that was new back then. And, um, yeah. Really good game. Keen to give that a another go. Next. Ultimate Spider-Man. Yeah, boy. Uh, recently went and visited family. And um, my brother's got PS4 Spider-Man. And I played that a bit. I didn't play it too much because I knew that I wasn't going to be able to take it home. <laughs> but uh, I really enjoyed it and I was like, God damn it, I need to have a Spider-Man game. Spider-Man 2, the movie game, is going for way too much. And I I've, I played that to death. Ultimate Spider-Man was one I never really touched on. Uh, again, same brother, he had it on PS2. 
and I watched him play a bunch of it and even helped him with a couple of races because he's rage quit a few times uh, when you're racing Human Torch. Um, so I helped him out with that. Yeah, I remember the game. Um, not not fondly, but I don't I didn't really play it a lot. All I saw was from what he played, but uh, I was asking him, I want a Spider-Man game, what do you recommend? It was either this or Web of Shadows on the 360 and he strongly recommended this one. And I picked it up for a pretty good price. And it's also um, complete with uh, with manual. It even came with a bit of bubble wrap in the middle. That's pretty neat. So, yeah, I'm, I'm one of those guys that I'm a stickler. It has to have the manual. It just has to. Um, I don't know. That's just an OCD thing, I guess, or just something anal. <laughs> I, I remember the days where the games have manuals, and I really I like them, because usually I'll have like cool hints and tips or artwork or just you know it feels more of a complete package than just having an empty case with a disc i remember those days i do wish that modern games had manuals as well but in this digital age i guess there's no point we're lucky they're still shipping discs out to us let me know if you played this one i'm keen to hop into this and uh give it a whirl i like the art style it's very much taken from the comic book line that it's um basically taken from so it's not my perfect uh, origin of Spider-Man and a lot of the characters are different than I remember them. It's not my ideal version, but it's still a very good take on it and um, pretty iconic. The ultimate line definitely has its fans. So yeah, pretty keen. And next, staying on the superhero theme. This one is not such a good game, but <laughs> I loved it. I played the absolute hell out of this back in the day. Superman, Man of Steel. Uh, exclusive to Xbox for some reason. It wasn't on any other consoles, uh, but man, did I did I flog this. There's some serious jank to it, very much so, like most Superman games, you just can't get it right. I just don't understand how so no one's cracked that yet. Superman Returns is pretty much the closest we've got to a legit Superman game, and that was rushed out the door using a Madden engine and um, hitting shells in a broken state before the movie came out. And... Um, I just, yeah, they, they had something with that game. I've got the 360 version of Superman Returns and the flying mechanics are spot on. It's just a lot of fun to fly around and uh, they got that part right. Combat was janky as hell. All the, the all the villains, it's just jank. Pretty much empty city. Like it's, it's a base game, like it's a proof of concept essentially, but boy did I play the hell out of that. But this one is very much more of a complete experience than that one. Um, it's very much of its time, taking from the Y2K buzz that, craze that was going around at the time. Brainiac's there, and he's there to, to create the Y2K event and um, convert Metropolis, you know, into a future tech or uh, just to take over, basically. And Superman's got to stop him. So yeah, you, know, you you deal with Brainiac, Lex Luthor, Metello, Bizarro, Cyborg, Mongol, and others. Blah blah blah. Really, really fun. Uh, you got all the powers. It's, I think, one of very few Superman games that legitimately uses his powers. Uh, like Heat Vision and Freeze Breath or Frost Breath, however you want to call it. Uh, telescopic Vision, X-Ray Vision, Flight, Super Strength, uh, Super Hearing, all of it. And it does it in, in a way that no other game has really done it before. So that's one reason why I like it, but I can tell a lot of love went into this game. It's very much, um very much a iconic or respectful representation of the character in that era of Superman at the time. So when it, when it came out, it was around the year 2000-ish. So it says here, 2002? Yeah, 2002 DC, DC Comics. God, I was just finishing year 12 in high school. Jeez, goodness. <sighs> yeah, I traded in my copy I had originally back in the day. And uh, again, this is just another one of those games that I'm rebuying later on in life due to regret. And um, I got this for a pretty good price too, complete with manual and in very much better condition than my last copy was. So no complaints from me. Very keen to hook right into this game as well. Right. So I've got more games on the way. A lot of 360 games coming. More original Xbox games on the way. Uh, as I said at the top of this, I just prefer to be playing those old games at the moment and collecting for those systems. Games that I missed. Games that I traded in uh, for dirt cheap. I picked up uh, Mass Effect, I think, the other day for eight bucks. Like the whole trilogy for un under 30 bucks, and that's on the way. I feel like playing through that again. Just stories like that. 
you know, a game that I never thought I'd be interested in playing, or I did have a slight interest in playing, six bucks, free postage or something like that, you know, why wouldn't I? And it's complete. It's a good time to be collecting for the system at the moment, both of them. Anyway, uh, that's going to be another topic later on when I get more games, I might show some more off. Uh, but for now, I think I've yacked on long enough about this kind of stuff. Let's get right into the Joker review. Ah, alrighty, so the Joker. Saw it yesterday, so it's still relatively fresh in mind. I just wanted to sleep on it before I gave my thoughts. Just happened to line up with today's Chunkcast recording. So I uh, haven't got around to see it before, I've just been flat out. So I'm a bit late on it. Uh, and I'm lucky I've missed a lot of spoilers online. So pretty lucky in that regard. I'm going to try and keep it that way in this review as well. A lot of you have probably seen it already. However, I will touch on the whole media bias that's happening with this film blowing it way out of control cause for alarm like it's a film this film was never made with the intent to incite violence or give justification for those who want to create violence i don't understand why the media has pounced on those headlines trying to ins you know create a situation by the sounds every headline was like cinemas having security guards in the complex or police on call for these viewings or you know calls for cinemas to not play the film due to fears of incel violence and you've got to be kidding me like is this the world that we live in right now it's a movie about the joker what it's an r-rated film anyone who's of decent sound mind of age older than 18 or 15 in this country We'll see it, and they usually have some kind of semblance of normalcy. The movie itself touches on mental illness. I'll go into that in a bit later, but... These people that are calling for this film not to be played this whole time should be more concerned about the actual people that will be inciting violence, not the film. It's a very small percentage of people that will act upon this kind of stuff. Very small percent. For any reason whatsoever, not just the film. There's plenty of actual real world reasons these people snap, not because of a movie that's come out. Sure, there might be some real psychos out there that'll take it as a copycat moment to do something, but you just never know. I, I don't believe in the, um, the small minority ruining it for the majority. I don't believe in that. Like, if, if there's one person that everybody's scared about, that shouldn't affect everybody else's enjoyment. I don't believe that at all. There's other ways to tackle that stuff from people that are smarter than me that know how to do that kind of stuff and anyway, i'm not going to go too deep into that because that's a whole whole nother ball game but hey look we survived seven saw movies and those are all movies about a psychopathic killer trying to teach people a lesson you know <laughs> during you know, trials and tribulations and tasks and puzzles and people getting ripped apart and you know we survived through seven of those without copycats i would be more concerned about that really Anyway, I'm, I'm talking out of my ass at the moment, but look, th this movie is very much not the Antichrist movie that the publications made it out to be, you know, and the Twitter sphere, which is usually the case. I would love to have seen, th this comes from Warner Brothers in DC, right? And there's already a negative connotation to their films. I would love to see if this was a movie done by Disney and Marvel. They would never make this movie, but I'm just saying, the media bias... If this was Disney and Marvel, I think people would be praising it. The, the same publications and Twitterverse people, I think they would be praising it. I really do. It just seems to be... There's proof online. You can go see it. The bias. It's strong. Anyway, it's just pure sensationalism at play. It really, really is. But look, this movie... I'm just going to take a sip of my coffee. <sighs> this movie, to me, it's pure raw cinema. It's real cinema. Something that we don't see very often. Or at this level, anyway. There's plenty of movies like this, of this calibre, but you just don't hear about them. Particularly uh, in the marketing sphere, you just don't know. There's plenty of these movies go under the radar. This isn't a popcorn, safe cookie cutter Disney Marvel film. It, it really isn't. However, it's, it's beautifully made. I was wowed by this movie. Just gonna say, like, I went in with expectations going, come on. It can't be that bad. Like you got people going like, oh, I was, I was moved by this movie and disturbed and rah, rah, rah. I'm like, whatever. There's a lot of people online you just can't trust. 
their reactions anymore. Like they're just saying it for sensationalism, like I mentioned before. But look, I see where they're coming from though. But I'm not going to be coming out of this theater totally shook and disturbed and crying like some people say they've been doing. But I appreciated the cinema aspect of it. The way it's shot, the way the movie let scenes just play out or, you know, they didn't rush things. They tackled certain scenes like head on as it would have gone out. They let the actors play and do what they needed to do to be in the role. It's not pushed or forced or anything like that. It's the music itself and the atmosphere that the movie made. Like it's an actual cinema film. It's good. You know, more people should see it. I'm glad that it's making big bucks. Like I think it's a $50, $50, $50 million budget, I think, or less from what I read online. And it's made over $600 million already in two weeks. I mean, that's just great. I mean, that's a big like middle finger to Warner Brothers and the previous management for trying to Marvelize and Disneyize, if that's a word, I'll make it up now, the DC Cinematic Universe um, that they were building. We already had like people saying, oh, I love this dark aspect that uh, these, this comic book film is and I love how dark it is and blah, blah, blah. It's great, it's refreshing. We already had that happening. <laughs> that's one of my main issues here at the moment. Not the film's problem, it's just the sphere that we're in. We already had this kind of world building. You know, we, we had the Man of Steel, which is a bit more realistic in its take, and I love that it's a masterpiece. And Batman vs Superman just pushed it a bit harder. Love that film so much. You know, we, we had it going. And that, anyway, that's, that's history. It's been well documented how screwed up Warner Brothers handled that film. And, um, or the subsequent film, Justice League, I mean, and how they um, muddled in Suicide Squad as well, which was originally a super dark film. And then we got the trailer trash neon vomit that we got in uh, Suicide Squad the Hit Theatres, even though it's still half enjoyable. Anyway, massive side tangent, but I just wanted to touch on that because I did see that online. A lot of comments from uh, reviewers saying, oh, I really love this film. It's a great dark take. I really enjoy this dark, edgy take. And we're already having that. And um, you all ruined it. <laughs> you all ruined it. <sighs> so... Moving on from that, I honestly don't believe it uh, warrants the R rating. Well, it was R rating in America and MA15 Plus here in Australia. Because, you know, we're a bit tougher over here. Um, it's not. I, I can understand why it has that rating. I do. But maybe it's because I'm older. But uh, I wasn't like, holy shit, I can't believe they did that. There's no moments in that movie that I haven't seen before in another film. But just the way that they filmed some things, um, I think was the shocking part. Cause it was like, oh wow, that was an excellent scene, you know, like, or how they executed that particular moment or scene. I was like, yeah, that, that's great. You know, that, that was the moments that I had. I was like, yeah, they didn't, uh, they didn't hide from it. They didn't shy away from those points. That was, that was awesome. I, I thoroughly enjoyed that. And that's probably why, uh, that's probably why it's got the extra rating on there. But as for the Joker story, it does represent the character very well. I'll say that much. Um, in a more digestible, cohesive form, in a realistic manner, like it's it's retelling that whole one bad day scenario that the, the Joker's already uh, always tied to in the comics. Uh, they even touch it in the Dark Knight as well, where Joker's like, you know, trying to push someone who's the best of the best of us just to have one bad day and anybody can fall. It's that, like, that's, the joke has always been about that. Not only with himself, but, like, anyone that he targets. And that's half the reason why he tackles Batman all the time. He's like, I just need to get this guy to have one bad day, and he'll come over to my side, you know? And they, they, they're doing that. They started off, this is an origin story. It's not, don't go in expecting this Joker to already know, like, the end game or where he's going and who he is. That's part of the journey on this one. Um, and I will say, I did, I did feel for the... I did feel for the guy. His name's Arthur Fleck in this movie. Now, his real name's not really known. Uh, I think they've named him a couple times in the comics, but it's never been set in stone. Um, Arthur Fleck, I like to think that's a bit of a, um, a nod to Affleck. You know, Batman, Batfleck, Arthur Fleck, Ben Affleck. I think you got the idea. Uh, I'm pretty sure, pretty sure that's, that's where that comes from because it's a pretty odd name. 
but yeah, in the comics, he doesn't really have a set name, let alone a set origin. And um, look, anyway, th this movie, it's it's Arthur's story in this movie is tragic to the point of understanding why he snaps. You know, back to that one bad day thing. We all have our bad days, but it, the whole premise of like it only takes one person to have one bad day, and they'll be pushed to do stuff that they never thought they'd be able to. Uh, but look, uh, there's some moments, I'm not going to spoil anything, but there were moments where I was like, yeah, good for you, kind of things, or God, I hope he, I hope he stands up for himself. Well, there, there are a lot of points in this movie where he has to stand up for himself, or back himself, where he gets pushed into a corner and, and he has to defend himself in um, in ways where you're like rooting for the guy. And then when he does it, it's, a, it's like, yeah, but you're also like, oh, what did he just do, <laughs> you know? And, and that starts the spiral, but... You can't help but feel feel for him because he, he didn't want to be put in those positions you know he's essentially a, a good guy or a guy trying you know he's a he's a guy with a heart in the right place trying and that's i think where the tragic part comes into it with how it all unfolds but um you know you push anyone far enough and they'll go over the edge um well look i want to touch on that origin part because Again, without spoiling things, in the comics, he doesn't really have a set origin. He's got a few, right? And he likes to pick and choose. He doesn't even know. Like, he's just that, he's that bent that he doesn't even know his or, his actual origin, where he comes from, what his story is, but he likes to cherry pick. Again, they, they touched that with Heath Ledger's one as well, where every story about his smile was different. So it, it's a true thing. And the stuff that he finds out in this movie about himself it's i think a hint back to that or touching on that origin where you just don't know and uh, that was great i really enjoyed that part it was a good way to do it a good realistic way to do it and you can see where like the the mental aspect coming in and the frustration of like, what the hell you know i'm just trying to be a good guy and all this stuff keeps happening uh but in the comics that aspect ex excites him like he likes to not know and keep people guessing and all that Anyway, uh, I don't want to touch on that too much longer because it, that'll spoil some moments. Um, but look, it does touch on some really dark themes like mental illness and how society can uh, affect people in different levels of society and how it affects their mannerisms and their nature and their surroundings and environment and how that can affect the person. They do go into all that and um, well, he's, he's bent from the get-go, there's no doubt. You know, there's no doubt, but... You get to see how he lives and the people around him that he associates with how they are and how they treat him and um all of this leads up to like yeah okay you can see it happening <laughs> you just you just do uh, i really really enjoyed that i'm not gonna go in i'm well not educated to be telling you about how mental illness can affect people um so there's plenty of other videos of people smarter than me that you can go watch about that kind of stuff but just know that it's in there and it's fascinating to know he's he's a flawed character no doubt he's not a, he's not our typical stereotypical hero but you can't help but root for the guy as i've mentioned a few times they've done that really well in this movie there is a very tense moment in the movie where he discovers himself i'll say that and it's a pretty poignant moment in the film and it's obvious uh you've probably seen it in the trailers and videos thrown around you know and he's doing this dance and stuff and uh the final shot of that scene is like he's just seen himself for the first time uh, that scene is so good <laughs> i really really dug it really really dug it uh and then from there the movie changes it's great um yeah it's, it's just and then throughout the movie you start seeing hints of uh, from that point on, you start seeing hints of the Joker that we all know. Uh, going toe-to-toe -to -toe Batman, like, just there's hints of the character in there. Uh, this is still an origin story, he's still finding himself, but you, you can see the hints. Uh, I will say, like, I will reiterate that a little bit. Um, this isn't the comical Joker that we all know from the comics. Like, he's not throwing fake teeth at people or acid spray flower things and uh, jack-in-the-box bombs, you know, all that kind of stuff. It's, that's not it at all so if that's what you're expecting and that's the joker that you know just leave that at the door because if you've seen the trailer you already know like he's 
it's not the same. It's not the same guy. Even the, the Dark Knight um, Heath Ledger version wasn't the same. So if you're going to critique it on that, um, then it's the wrong movie for you. Just enjoy it for what it is. Well, look, there's, there's a lot more to talk about, and there's a lot of Easter eggs that touch on the whole Gotham City and... Oh God, what can I say without spoiling things? The future of the Joker and his world and who he deals with. There's a lot of nods and hints on where this story could go. I remember saying that they were doing this as a one-off, but I think now that it's made over 600 million, there's probably chats with Warner Brothers to be like, so Todd Phillips and Joaquin Phoenix, how about doing another one? You know, you've got to expect it. And I'm happy with that, but I'm also okay with this being its own thing. I don't need a three-part trilogy for this or whatever they want to do I don't I don't need it unless um, it turns into like a, a story that's woven into the new Batman film somehow I don't know but yeah look I, I thoroughly enjoyed this it's got room if they need sequels uh, it is its own contained story and I'm okay with that if that's all it is no problem whatsoever it's not an evil film it really isn't don't believe the hype or at least that hype. Just believe the hype that it's a good film. It's very, very good. It's excellent. It's a realistic story of a downtrodden man who's in an already less than ideal place in life which subsequently falls apart around him. Though not for lack of trying. He does. He very, very much tries. But he has one bad day and thus begins the agent of chaos that we all know. Yeah, go see it. Highly recommend it. Uh, go in with a free mind and any kind of iterations of Joker that you've seen before leave them at the door and just enjoy it personally I actually enjoyed um, Jared Leto's Joker <laughs> they're just saying I'd like to see him again and Affleck but I know that's never going to happen again but um, look I really enjoyed this go see it anyway I'm going to have another sip of my coffee before it gets cold and we can move into the next topic <sighs> right on more comic stuff Chant, we're about the games. Don't you want you to talk about games? Yeah, but I like comics as well, you know, so leave it, let me have it. Um, Superman. If you didn't notice, I'm a bit of a Superman fan. <laughs> um, but, look, I haven't read Superman comics for years. 2011, they rebooted DC Comics and the New 52, and I was all about that. I really enjoyed it, and... Um, about 52 comics in on every line pretty much that was still going they rebooted the uh, universe again about five years later or something 52 issues one a month uh, to DC Rebirth and I, I just jumped off at that point because I was like well I was invested for five years now we're changing and massively changing things and I just didn't come back to it however um, I wish I kept on it but now I'm looking at picking up all the trade paperbacks uh, like collected volumes I don't know how far back I'll go but there's at least four out of uh, the new Justice League books there's four volumes out now that I think I might use the jumping jumping on point uh, I was going to go back and try and uh, get all the trade paperbacks of Justice League and uh, at least Justice League from New 52 because that was a freaking epic story oh, ending in the Dark Side War fantastic anyway back to Superman How do I start this? I'm not a fan. <laughs> I, I, I didn't like what they did to the new 52 Superman. They, they killed him off. It was pretty epic. I actually um, almost shed a tear when I read that comic when they when he died. Because uh, the way they did it was really, really cool. And what it was setting up. And uh, then the uh, pre-New 52 Superman came back. The the super powerful one. that The old one that we all grew up on. He came back and uh universe stuff multiverse stuff it's hard to explain in two minutes so i'm not even going to try however rebirth is now finished and the storyline is continuing and superman's been taken over by brian michael bendis who some of us in the comic space might know as just being someone iconic in the marvel comic sphere he's been with marvel for years and he's been behind some of the biggest uh, stories over there so he moved over to DC a few years ago 
a massive deal. Massive deal. I'm not entirely a, a huge fan of what he does, but you can't discount some of the iconic stories that he did over at Marvel. One being Civil War. He was behind the reveal of Spider-Man. He revealed his secret identity in, in that Civil War comic. And now he's tackling it here. And uh, he's even admitted that this is going to be a massive task. And it was one of the discussions that he had moving over is that this is something that he wanted to do after he earned his stripes over the last couple of years of writing both action comics and Superman books each month. I think one of them is a, bi a bi-monthly as well. So he's been doing a lot of Superman writing in the last couple of years and I've yet to read them. Read uh, I'm hearing mixed things either way. Some real cool concepts, but then there's some dialogue that's a bit of a bit weak, a bit of a problem. Um, but look, I'm, I'm keen to go back. There's two or three volumes that are out at the moment, so I don't have much to catch up on. So I'm thinking I'll start picking up books over the last four volumes that have come out. I can't justify buying volumes for the last three or five years just to catch up on everything. So, I mean, that, that's a good reason why they do do these jump on points or these reboots or just... Um, soft relaunches to get readers as a safe jumping on point after like a run is finished and that's that's fine so th with this i might start picking up he did his own origin story or retelling and a re, re shift of the status quo with a four-part series called man of steel which um set up his whole run to follow so that's going to be my point to come on um so he's done a lot of drastic changes the sun that lois in um Clark had he's aged him up like he got rid of Lois and this and John Jonathan Kent he uh, shipped them off to a planet somewhere else uh, for some reason I don't know about it so I haven't read the story but uh, he wanted to give Superman his solo experience again and he's like go away Lois and John for a while and uh, anyway so he's come back and Jonathan Kent space time don't understand but he's, an, he's a teenager now I don't know how they do it. I'm keen to figure that out. So we've got a Superboy now. And he's got a cool costume. And Lois is back. Hasn't aged. Don't know how they explain that. Um, so I can't give you a lot of the context here about a lot of the changes that he's done. But one of the things he wants to do is to lose Superman's identity. And I can understand why. Uh, they've tried to do it in the past. In the New 52, they did that. Lois figured it out and revealed it to the world through the daily planet and it was plastered all over super uh, super social media and that, that was a dick move <laughs> a very dick move that they had a conversation about that of like what the fuck are you doing why did you do that you know that whole conversation you've just destroyed my life and yeah he had to go into hiding and that, i remember reading that story it was, it was a good story very good for like story aspect but a very much a dick move uh, to do that to someone that you're not kind of with or you are kind of with this was like around the time when superman was dating wonder woman and lois really wasn't in the picture uh, but was kind of interested so anyway she took her professional integrity over the top of uh an actual person and uh dropped that bomb on the world and on clark himself so they've done that that storyline is pretty cool and yeah like i said it made him go he had to go into hiding for ages and he was superheroing from the shadows and um, lost his suit and uh, something else changed where the Fortress of Solitude wouldn't recognize him anymore so he got booted from the Fortress. So yeah, anyway, I'm just saying that they've done it before. So now Brian's like, yeah, I want to do it my way now. I want him to not be outed, but I want him to out himself. Which is going to be pretty interesting because he's not done that. He, the only person he's outed himself to really willingly that meant anything to him was Lois and obviously the Justice League like everybody knows who he is because it's part of the thing if you're in the league secret identities are a thing to be told and shared um, so yeah this is going to be interesting because in this modern age you've got smartphones facial recognition satellites people with, like with phones everywhere how can he continue to get, get away with it like he wears glasses, yeah, but as a as a hero, he doesn't wear a mask, so his face is always on display. And part of the writing behind that is because, well, the fact that he doesn't wear a mask shows that he's got nothing to hide. So why would he be anyone else? Like why would he be one of us? 
and that's that's mostly the reason why he doesn't have a mask or he doesn't hide himself because he's like well here i am i have no reason to hide myself so therefore there is no secret identity even though there is <laughs> so but then you've got the clark ken aspect of like well why does he do it and glasses really like it's always been a joke i never you know i get it but it's like come on it's a story about superheroes just leave your leave your adult bag at the door um so i'm gonna be interested to see what he does where he's just like yeah look i don't need to do this like, who am i protecting I, i'm superman i can protect anybody um it's that whole story about well lois then becomes uh a victim or a target one of the recent comics is that she got caught again touching on the smartphone thing she got caught on smartphone camera kissing superman at the uh, you know being rescued or something like that and um at the time she was with clark and people knew it so she got a bit of flack in the media about oh you know you're a hussy you know all this kind of stuff you know you're kissing superman when you're with clark so there's all that kind of confusion and stuff where i can see where it gets a bit silly in today's world so he's like well, why am i gonna hide this from people <laughs> why am i hiding this um i'm superman maybe i can just be superman all the time uh, I'm interested to see where this story goes. It, it's been the talk for ages. It's been a joke, the butt of the joke about, you know, someone puts their glasses on and you're like, oh, who's that? What? You take them off. Oh, okay, there you are. Where'd you go? That whole thing. So, <laughs> uh, I'm very, very fascinated because it opens up so many more stories. I said, well, what does he do now? He can't just be someone else. Like, he's, he's going to be, he's going to be able to be more him. He doesn't have to pretend to be a Clark Kent. He doesn't have to pretend to be a Superman. He doesn't have to be Clark on the farm or Kal-El on the farm. Like, like there's three different personalities here that make up this character. If he gets rid of all that, who is he? What has he become? Does he focus more of his time in the fortress or does he stay in Metropolis? I don't know. There's a lot of stories that could be told. I'm really fascinated to know about it. This story that I found, I only found this out yesterday. I had another topic to talk about today that I dropped because I wanted to talk about this one. This is going to be the, the story that's going to make me want to catch up <laughs> on what's going on. Like, where did Jonathan Kent come from? How did Lois have Clark's kid without getting burst like an alien? You know, from aliens, like an egg. <laughs> um, how's that all possible? When did that happen? Why did he team up with Zod? to fight this Rolgar Zol or whatever his name is, this, this beast from Krypton. There's all these stories that I've missed out on. And it's annoying. <laughs> so uh, and now this, like I want to get caught up before they do it. It's December 18th, I think this issue comes out. December this year. Superman issue 18, whenever that is. Uh, that's when it's going to happen. And he's going to be there with all Justice League friends and, and the world watching. And what ramifications is that going to have? All the people that worked with him as Clark Kent as a reporter, like, can he still be a reporter? Can he still be trusted by people around him that used to know him? You know, like the whole time they've been hanging out. Yeah, you know, he's had super hearing. He's been eavesdro eavesdropping, maybe. Or, you know, he's X-ray vision. Who's he been watching? Or, you know, is he always looking through people? Friends that he knows, like, there's trust issues there. <sighs> yeah, I don't know. Oh, I'm pretty excited. It's pretty cool. It hasn't been done in this way before. So uh, it's going to be another aspect of, like I said, Lois outing him to the world and then him doing it on his own terms. That's the one that I'm really keen on, on reading. So Brian Michael Bendis, you, you might get me on board picking up Superman comics again and uh, action comics and Superman books again. So don't let me down. I'm going to be spending the odd 20 or 30 bucks on a volume to catch up better be good sir or uh i'll send you a nasty tweet like people do these days <laughs> i'm so gonna tweet you i'm so disappointed in this book you know people do they waste their time like that anyway i don't know let me know do you guys read comics i've been waffling on about this particular topic for a bit i don't even know many people that read comics anymore i know a lot of people do but not many i'll say that the sales speak for themselves when you've got big books like, I don't know, Batman struggling to push 80,000 copies worldwide. And even that's good these days. That's determined as good these days. And Superman doesn't even push those numbers anymore. 
So interested to know if any of the viewers of this video watch comics digitally online or do they read them, they go to a shop and pick them up. I prefer to have the actual physical trade, the collection of an arc or whatever. I'm kind of overdoing the single books because then you've got to wait a month for the next one. And Anyway, that's a whole nother rant. Just let me know below. My coffee is cold as hell and I'm going to finish this before the next topic. Here we go. Oh god, that is cold. It's gross. It's not much left to go. It's got me in a sour mood already for this topic. Gears 5. There's more Gears of War DLC coming. Gears 5 DLC coming. And guess what? None of it is for Gears characters. It's more Terminator, Dark Fate, whatever that new movie's called. Whoopty frickin' do. Where's my Gears of War characters? Are they just locked behind this True of Duty battle pass system? Where if I want to unlock normal JD, I've got to grind like for 40 hours. <sighs> Look, <clears throat> I did have a whinge about this in a, in a video or two ago, but this has just reignited this frustration for me. I haven't played Gears 5 for a while now. Because I love the campaign, loved it. Very keen to go through the campaign again at some stage. However, my need to play the game on the multiplayer aspect, if I, I'm not going to get any progression out of it, any, practically, for how they've got it set up, not a fan at all. I'm not adverse to giving criticism to properties I love. I love Gears, love it. It's my one of my, or well, my top favorite gaming franchise, or at least it's it was <laughs> or it's getting to the point where it, it was my favorite if this is how they're going to keep doing it i don't know if this has got something to do with game pass or if this is just how games are these days going forward or if they're just trying to make an extra buck i, I don't know but why the hell do i give a shit about terminator characters in gears of war you already wasted two spots with sarah connor and the t800 model as part of the pre-order dlc stuff like that's just wasted slot if that's all you're gonna do fine but now we've got more coming three more characters from the film no one gives a shit or two two or three more films i don't know uh, characters from the movie i, I don't know because I, I don't give a shit why give us like give us more gears characters from the comics or the novels or previous games or something you know um i just don't see the point on why this is still a thing like terminator's all over the place at the moment you got him in mortal kombat 11 arnold schwarzenegger in there and sarah connor skins like for sonya blade and um who's the other one there's another character from terminator that's in mortal kombat 11 i don't know i don't give a shit I, I don't understand why this is they're doing this kind of marketing and advertising in these games now it doesn't really happen i think we're all used to getting movie tie-in games mortal kombat i know has been doing some movie tie-in stuff over the previous years but never really halo or gears of war for movies i, I don't like it it pulls you out it pulls you out of the game like it's it's like there's more Every bit of DLC that's been announced so far has been Terminator related. And I don't care for any of it. As a fan of Gears of War, s stop it. <laughs> I don't want it, I'm not going to buy it. Particularly, the way they've changed grinding out for characters. I th there's been an update where they've changed the way to do it. Where my last complaint was, I've got to grind out countless modes and objectives to get stars to add up to a certain amount so I can unlock the next gate in the battle pass system so I can move to unlock a particular character in the line like it's just it's a waste of time I don't like it and uh, it's just making me not play it even though it's geared to make people play <laughs> it's doing the adverse effect for me where I'm just like this it's, this is too complicated it's too much time required of me to unlock a character that I want and now there's a totem system i read an article earlier today just to clarify it there's a, there's a totem like system now where you equip 
this totem of that character. And you've got to grind out however many matches or however many wins you got to do to fill up the token or the, the totem. And uh, at the end of it, once you fill it up or met the requirements, you unlock that character. But the problem is you can only have one of those attached to your character at a time. So there's three or four new characters in this DLC pack. You've got to grind out what they estimated to be about 10 hours to fill up a totem of like gameplay. So you got to do 40 hours to unlock these four new characters. Or if that's too much, you can go buy them individually with either real money or you buy the in-game currency to buy these new characters. Like it's just, why, why make it this difficult? Why? I mean, I just don't get it. I, I understand that they're trying to milk this and all the new games, all the triple, AAA new games are doing it. And this is half the reason why I'm like picking up old games. There's none of that shit in these. None of it. You get your whole game here. You can unlock your characters and your skins and all that in the game. I, I miss this. And that's why I, for the price of a new game these days, I can get like five of these. Five games for the price of one new one that's just going to want to milk me more. So no, I do not like it. I do not like... And as a Gears fan, like, I'm less inclined to even play it. Because I know that I'm not going to get anywhere with it. I'm not able to unlock stuff the right way. And, uh, like, I couldn't care less. The only time I would play Gears again, Gears 5, is just to do the campaign again. I would be more inclined to go back to Gears of War 3 and see if their servers are still online. And play there. Really. Even, like, going past Gears 4. Go back to Gears 3. And that's when the game was at its peak at its best how they just had it right or gears 2 even i don't know. as a big fan of gears it hurts to say because i love it and i've wanted to champion this franchise but this game is just everything wrong with the game space and for me to even look up with my gears shelf up there and be like you know what um there's a jd statue on a bike and a Gears 4 Lancer up there and the collector's editions and you know of 4 and 5 up there maybe I could just sell everything and just whittle it down to a trilogy collection because I still have my Gears of War 3 console out there you know maybe I could just give up walk away and just be like Gears 1 to 3 yeah that was a good time and then just walk away free up some shelf space it's a bit drastic, I know, but that's just how I'm feeling about it. I'm just, I feel dirtied by this game. And I wonder who's to blame. Coalition? Well, is this by design the whole time? Or is this insisted by Microsoft? Or is this a Rod Ferguson thing? Or is this like, a, is there just all the investors that I like? No, let's milk it for all we can. It's just who's to blame here? I haven't looked into it enough because I'm just like, I don't give a fuck. You're making me not want to play the game. That's bad enough. And I'm, you know, admittedly one of the biggest Gears fans that most people in my circles know. I don't know. Do you guys play Gears? Have you even played Gears 5, the story mode? I mean, it's on Game Pass. You can play it there. You get the Ultimate Edition there. The campaign is definitely worth it. If you have any interest, play the campaign. It's excellent. Excellent. But if you have any interest on going into multiplayer, just expect that the base characters that you load up with, that's all you're going to get. Unless you want to grind out 40 to 100 hours for a couple of new characters and some skins and whatever. I'm not about that at all. I don't have time for that shit. Nobody does. Anyone that has 40 to an hour, 100 hours to grind out a few characters on a game really should rethink what they're doing with their life. Really. Unless there's a reason why they can't do anything else and that's, that's a bit different. But I don't know. I'm just salty. I'm just ranting a bit. This is off script. I've got points on here that I haven't even touched on. I'm just going off a bit script at the moment because I'm, I'm very much annoyed. Very much annoyed. To the point, if I'm even considering selling my stuff, that's a bit of a bit of a problem. I might even do that whole Twitter thing again. I'll, I'll cut out this part, edit out this part as a separate video, upload it to Twitter and tweet Rod Ferguson and the Coalition and be like, wham, wham, my first world problem. Pay attention to it. <laughs> Oh, far out. I don't know. These are the reasons why I don't play modern games. And I'm going to keep saying it until it changes. 
I do hope next gen, I do hope a lot of this stuff goes away. It's had its time, nobody wants it. Do away with it. Find another way to make money. Charge more for games, I don't know. But I'm sick of this shit. If I'm more inclined to go buy, I don't know, uh, Tyler Tasmanian Tiger 3 for 20 bucks, then invest in your digital e ecosystem for a franchise that I love, there's a problem. Or if I'm more inclined to buy, oh, I had I was toying with the idea of Kane and Lynch 2 on 360 because I never played those games. Five bucks, free postage. If I'm more inclined to put my money there on a shithouse game series, <laughs> just out of sheer curiosity, then play these new games, there's a problem. You know, there is a problem. And I know I'm not alone there. This is my first world problem. It's real. It's my problem. <laughs> I'm trying to address it here. I say I make these first first world problem jokes a lot because it's just funny having a whinge about this kind of stuff when there's bigger things to worry about. But it's annoying, man. It, it doesn't need to be. It really doesn't need to be. Anyway, I'm ending that one there because I can rant about that for ages. And I've had enough. Had enough. Let me know what you think. How many modern games are you playing these days? Or is there just one or two that you stick to that haven't done the dirty on you? Let me know below. I am actually quite interested. Quite interested to know. And I'm going to try and finish the rest of this stark cold coffee. Uh, yeah, that is cold. Not a fan. I've done three of these now in a row. <clears throat> Where every time my coffee runs out cold at the end of it. You think I'd learn by now? Yeah, you think so. Maybe next week I'll have water. Or tea. Or something. Find out next week. Anyway, those are my three topics. A bit weird. A bit of a weird one. None of these topics really mer meshed or merged really well. I was a bit more uh, off the cuff with it. I had a lot of points on all three topics that I, that I missed out on, but I think I touched on most of it. Still getting used to this. Still, still happening with the uh, the chunk ass format and um, talking off the cuff with stuff. I don't really have anyone else to talk to about this kind of stuff before I do it, so it's all raw as I'm doing it. I don't run it past anybody, so um, keeps it authentic, you know. Uh, so yeah, I'll try and find uh, some extra posy peeps comments this week. I haven't had a chance to go digging through. There's been a lot of comments online and uh, on my recent video as well. So you're going to see that slideshow in a moment. Really enjoying when people actually put in the hashtag Posse Peeps. <laughs> That's really cool to me that someone's actually gone, Oh yeah, I'm going to include that hashtag. This dumb ass hashtag. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it gives, gives me a laugh and uh, gives me joy every time I see it. So that's, that's pretty cool. Uh, so I'm going to try to dig through my Twitter Twitter feed and my YouTube comments and um, see who's left some positive comments. Hopefully there are some. Otherwise, this next section after this is going to be uh, blank. Yeah. That'll be interesting. Anyway, well, let's find out. I'll wrap this up now. I'm Uncle Chant. Thank you for watching this video again. Again. Well, I hope you haven't watched it again, because why the fuck would you? Thanks for watching this video this one time. If you made it through to the end of this video, hashtag posy peeps <laughs> in the comments so I know that you've seen it. And uh, I'll make note of those comments for next week. And hopefully some more interesting stuff happens throughout the week. Because I tell you, this week was pretty, pretty stark for some topics that I wanted to talk about. Really, I got to like last night and I'm like, what the hell am I going to talk about? They're, I'm seeing the Joker tomorrow, but nothing else has really happened this week that I wanted to really talk about. <laughs> so, thanks for hanging in there with me if you actually made it to the end. UncleChant.com has all my socials, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Mixer. It's all Uncle Chant. You can find me there. And um, as always, in the meantime, be kind to each other. Enjoy yourselves and come back next week and we'll have some more laughs. Indeed. To lose.
Subscribe!